Um, the first of those questions, Tom, is given that APEC says public, publicly, uh, and you uh, affirm today, that it does not intend to use fracking, is APEC now prepared to enter into an uncom unconditional binding commitment not to allow fracking or similar stimul stimulation techniques in the Illawarra? Some unique areas because of all the coal mining that's been done there are we believe there's relaxed stresses in the area and the, there will be no need for fracking i'm not anti-fracking i'm just saying we are not going to be fracking here i think it can be done safely but i'm saying it will not happen here because if we drill through those seams we see these coals if they don't have that enhanced permeability this is not a viable project you know it probably won't work we'll walk away so that's where that comments comes from. So even if someone else buys the company, well, they won't buy it because there's no value in it if we if we find that you know these things don't have that enhanced permeability where fracking is not required. Which doesn't answer your specific question, which was, can we would we enter into a binding agreement with with who? With <laughs> and I and I we have a lawyer here. I'm not sure if that's possible. Can a company enter into a binding agreement that is extendable. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, look, I'm a, we're a small company. Oh, yeah. Is, is it possible, well, Kirsty, to um, create a, a contract or something with, the, with a binding agreement to the community? Uh, look, I'm sure you could work out a way. Um, it, it probably is not that difficult. I mean, most of the environmental laws can be enforced by anyone in the community anyway, so it would be sort of some commitment that then anyone in the community could basically enforce the entity you chose to make. Sorry. Sorry. If I could just, just make the point uh, again, though, uh, and notwithstanding Tom's good intentions, the, the fact is that the likelihood of Apex and all mill their assets, any, any gas that they produce, being flipped on to another operator are very, very high, in my opinion. In fact, the track record shows uh, that you even had, uh, in the last month, a company the size of Eastern Star Gas, which uh, decided that they didn't want to put all that money down on the table, because you, remember, you, you'll be investing for years, hundreds of millions of dollars, probably, and you don't get a cent in revenue until it's all over. And, uh, Small companies, one-off companies, are just incapable of handling that, even a company the size of Eastern Star Gas. So we hear the assurances, but the people who we really need to make the assurances are the people who will be doing the extraction, and quite frankly, they're not here today. The, the production operator, or does it intend selling its interest, based, uh, interest to an established operator based upon the identified value of the reserves? as was the case with your previous company, Pure Energy, which was purchased by British Gas and now operates as Queensland Gas. Well, I think as a publicly traded company, you already know the answer to that. If someone comes in and starts buying the shares, which happened at Pure, they got control of our company. Our intention is to, is to develop this, work it forward, um, you know, with the intention of being operator, providing gas for the power stations, that's our intention, yet, Things go get out of control. I, 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 there's a previous company I was involved with, the same thing. You know, these things happen and, and sometimes out of your control. So you already know the answer to that question. So uh, in, in that in that sense, it's an interesting concept about the uh, this tracking. I'm not kidding. Oh, I know, but I'm, I'm saying potential reasons. And I come from a technical background. I don't believe that there's any point that if, if, if fracking
times of fire, this project won't be economic, is, is, uh, is what. And before, before Pure and before this, I spent the first half of my career in a technical evaluation company, one in North America and one here. And you know, so that's what we did. We valued companies, and uh, and the technical aspects of, of of you know taking this oil or gas and seeing if it's economic and bringing it to market. So that's our technical and professional opinion: is that tracking is not necessary. So I think, no, I don't know what other people might. Hey, I've got just one more question, and then we'll get back into the floor, and we'll pass the microphones around. Uh, just the last question then, uh, which I suppose blows on again. Apex is a um, minimally capitalised non-liability company. Uh, please explain why the company operates in this structure and what it means in the context of its ability to remediate any environmental mishap should that arise. Further, is the company willing and able to put up substantial financial security deposits as a disaster alleviation contingency? Well, two parts. One is uh, I speak for Ormill, and the reason that I'm speaking for the project is because we are a publicly listed company that are answerable, answerable to shareholders and to the, you know, ASIC and the regulations. And if something goes wrong, and I've been told as well, and and, and I mean we operate in um, WA and uh, Queensland, where public directors are a lot more liable for problems in New South Wales than any other state. Is that? You understand it? So, um, I guess, yes, I'm, I mean, the buck stops here. If things go wrong, uh, I'm not sure. But. There was a question, um, and a, you know, a good question that uh, if if Ormill Energy, we're a publicly listed company, our drivers are the shareholders. Well, I'm also the biggest shareholder. I'm not the only shareholder. I'm, I can be outvoted if, if the mass majority of the shareholders go against. You can buy some shares. If everyone here bought shares, you can vote me out. It's happened. It's happened. You know, many times. But um, for instance, um, I love the idea of solar thermal. I love the idea of, of solar thermal, and as a matter of fact, I mean, we have a very small staff, and I hired a, a guy who's a, um, because I think, when I, when I looked at this, and I said, this looks like a fantastic opportunity, I still think, I know, I think solar thermal may be, but I still think it's really nice. But my point is, I now have a guy on staff, not on staff, on contract, to who's looking at what's happened in Spain, um, how viable is it economically? I think it's a fantastic future. Australia is massive. We have tons of land, tons of sun. It makes sense to me, you know, theoretically, and it, and it does work, but it doesn't, it's not a proven technology yet, in that if there's one or two plants, there's not tens of thousands of them. Um, I guess one of my concerns, and I've got a long list, but there's be plenty of other people that would deal with many of these things straight off the bat. Um, I work in the construction industry, which is very heavily regulated. Um, all of these people in this room will understand what they have to go through for a development application to get a carport built in front of their boundary line. Um, I am very surprised that such an industry is not regulated with the same development guidelines that someone building a garden shed more, worth more than $12,000 is up for. Um, that sort of brings it to a micro level. I would strongly argue that the level of regulation on, on our project is is more than adequate. We, we've been trying for nine months to drill three wells in areas where there's been 3,000 wells, similar wells already drilled. So we, we it's been back and forth for public input. We it's taken us nine months. So I'm I don't know how long it takes for some of your permits, but I'm guessing it's not much quicker. Is it? Is it? Oh, sorry, don't you get started. It's mostly publicly available, and I can point you to the websites. There's tons of pub, there's, there's tons of information available. I mean, there's back and forth 
there's submissions, resubmissions, there's, you know, there's tons of information available. Um, and, and, I, and I'm, one thing that I did read, and there was an article um, that I brought with me, but is that what a lot of the, and I can only, I'm, I'm, I will just speak for myself, but occasionally I'll say, look, in the greater industry, the, uh, the big companies have now said, man, we should have been telling the people more things because it's, it's, it's blown up out of their, you know, they, they, they didn't realize they weren't paying attention. And, and uh, same with me, when the first newspaper article came out, like I said, we went, well, there's four errors in the headline. We haven't even drilled one well yet. How can we, I have protesters against something that we don't even know if it's there yet? So, I, so I, and it was a mistake on my part. You know, we should have been um, communicating more. We were communicating quite openly with the, our specific landowners, um, but not to the general community. And, and uh, that's, that's a fact, and, I'm, and we're trying to make up for that. Yes. So how, given we haven't done that, can we actually say, this is better environmentally? So the, the clear point to make there is, you just talked about the point of combustion. So when you burn gas, yes, it's less carbon intensive than coal. But leaking methane, methane is 105 times worse in terms of global warming potential over a 20 year period than coal. Methane that leaks is going to warm the atmosphere much, much faster. And I think no one would deny that pipelines, wellheads, processing plants, they leak. And the rate at which they leak means this is likely worse, if not far worse, than coal environmentally. I'd also say that the article you put up from the Herald, it, it, it's a bit strange because I, I understand what you're saying and I, I'm not blaming the companies. Frankly, the blame lies with the government. They granted these approvals when we don't have the knowledge. They're not looking after communities. Yeah. And, then, <laughs> and, and look, Tom, you can say that, that people knew, but can I just ask a really honest question? Who here found out because the government told them that this was going ahead? Who knew back in 2009 or 2007 or 2004 when the test well was being drilled that people wanted to put this in our community? Who here found out because of the media or a public campaign? It's the responsibility of government to actually talk to communities, ask communities and do the investigation before they, before they actually inflict this on us without even talking to us first. And you say, Tom, that people are just whipping up fear, but the fear isn't, this isn't media generated, it's not community generated. We are worried, but we're worried because of the mounting evidence. So when you can see people who can light their water on fire, when you see that the, we're now seeing prosecutions around contamination as a result of this, we're seeing wells that explode, we're seeing huge above ground industrialisation, like that is evidence. This isn't, this isn't something that's just been magicked up by people, it's not a fear campaign, it's based on the evidence. And what all, all people like us are calling for is you have to prove it safe before you do it. And the thing is, it's not being done safely, and the question is, can it be done safely? Alright, I'm, I'm just going to ask two questions. Two questions. So the two questions are, one, when we actually met with, with Chris Lawrence and Chris Rogers from Apex who are here today, they told us they were considering um, storing gas in the mined um, coal seams. I'm just wondering if that's still a plan or if there's any progress on that. And secondly, if you guys are happy to say it can be done safely, I ask you to sign our petition. Because all we're saying is prove it's safe, a pause on the industry until you can prove it's safe. So I ask you to sign our petition. Or in the existing cavity, so that the mine, the mine workers. Um, okay, uh, just I wish I could, because I'd like to comment on some of the other ones, but I've sort of lost track. But it's all, it's all. Anyway, um, okay, on that issue, uh, everything we do, if we decide to put one molecule of gas back into these, into the coal seams, and um, we're looking at it because there's a big, there's big void spaces there. It's, it's a possibility at this point. Absolutely not. We we haven't even started applying for that. We, we haven't I'll step back again. We have not yet drilled a well to show that we have any gas. So every step of the way, including just drilling three wells, involves an incredible amount of, of um, you know information back and forth. If in the future something goes wrong, there is some sort of uh, poisoning or contamination or anything. Um, how can it humanly, is there the technology to fix it? 
And before we answer the question, I refer you to Orica at Stockton, who have had two incidents in the last month. And the last one that happened, the management there said it's never happened anywhere else in the world. So, okay, so the question, keep that in mind when you answer the question. The, the question is, if I've got it correct, is uh, drilling at depth, Tom, if there is an issue, has the organisation got the capacity to remediate that? Has any organisation in the world got the ability? Is it possible? Of course it's possible. <coughs> Humanity has dealt with many, uh, you know, many problems. I, I'm not sure. That's yes, it is possible. Yeah. 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 We'll go to the next question. The lady in the middle had a hand up right from the beginning. Um, yes. I'd just like to ask. You mentioned that the water gets taken elsewhere. You mentioned that the water gets taken elsewhere. Can you tell us where that water goes and what happens to it and where it ends up? I'm going to uh, get some uh, help from the floor on that because there's many different... When we dispose of the water, we have contractors come to us and they say, look, we are um, recognized state regulated water disposal areas. We dispose of the same water of some of these other 3,000 drilling locations and, you know, they're regulated, they're controlled, they're monitored, and we take it to... Contractors come to us and they put in a bid for handling and disposing of our water. So it's the same as all these other drilling projects. And specifically, I don't know which. Yeah, how's it geologically incorrect? Now that is geologically, I will argue that point geologically and I will ask you what your qualifications are to answer that question. Exactly what is your ge geological qualification? Yeah, as a matter of fact, after the large discussions we've gone through back and forth, and we can show you a stack of emails on exactly that issue, the Department of Planning, as I showed before, said this is no different than I'm not Other interested world. in the Department of Planning. I've had enough dealings with them and their inaccuracies. I'm asking you. Yes, that's yeah, I'm that asking you the difference between the mining and will you please and announce that? No well, you're wrong. You're geologically wrong. So you're lying to us. Actually, um, I'll tell you what. I, the best way to stop CSG LOR, stop CSG everywhere, is turn your bloody lights off and quit using your air conditioner. Oh, oh yeah. If there was not a demand for energy, if there was not a demand for energy, I wouldn't be out there trying to find energy. We're using coal. We're fine. And the reason there's a profit is because people are buying the energy. If there was no demand for the energy, so. The question was, uh, well, that's what I'm saying. I, I think the price of, uh, of power, I think the price that you pay for power should be doubled right now. And then that would, that would also then encourage um, thugging. <laughs> uh, thermal solar, it would, it would encourage alternatives. But people aren't going to pay more for their power. It will encourage thermal solar alternatives and uh, so I don't, I can't answer that question. If, if there was a lot more, you know, people pay, were willing to pay more for energy, seriously, if, if it made sense right now to go, and I'm looking into this, and, I'm, and this is not bullshit, and seriously looking at the business opportunity of solar thermal energy, I think that looks great. Right now, I don't see it happening before we, well, maybe before we drill these three problems, it might happen. I'll buy some shares, Tom, when you're going to solve for me. A very important point that I came here to see uh, represented today to the community. Uh, there's a lot of uh, misinformation being spread, and uh, if I were a community member down here, it would scare me as well. But a lot of it is uh, sensationalistic and incorrect 
uh, we'd like to correct some of those things. If you look at our website, uh, there's a lot of information there, and the industry will start and, and correct information back to the community. We're starting that process. Uh, we've been remiss, uh, as Tom mentioned earlier, that it caught up with something quickly. Um, however, the particular thing that I want to raise about the Warrior your backyards here is there's been talk and scare campaign about drilling the backyards of the beach communities down in the Uh Move on. It's been the press a number of times recently. Um, Chris Williams on um, Alan Jones Radio said specifically that uh, Apex is going to drill in the backyards of the beach side suburbs. It's in their backyard. Point. The, the point. The point that I was going to make was there will never be any drilling for coal and methane below the escarpment. The gas has all escaped over the last millennia. So uh, for anyone living down near the coast thinking that a gas drilling company is going to come along, they won't. The gas isn't there. So. That's where our water is. Thank you. When it rains, is there an overflow risk or other risks associated with the holding ponds? Tom? There are no holding ponds. There's self-contained plastic tanks and they're taken away, like, um, as I said before, for a proper disposal at established um, disposal sites. Considered some ponds, so you know. <coughs> and that's what I'm saying. During the process, that has now changed. There are no sump ponds. Yes, uh, I don't, that 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 part of it, yes, is uh, has been changed. It's public information. It will be. Well, it is now it's public information. How many people from the research team do we have in the room left right now? Two, three, four, five, six. We put together a research team of eight to ten people, which consists of uh, scientists, PhDs, sociologists, economics people, who are looking into the information that's available and making sure that we put the best information we have available out at any point in time. Now, we have responded in the past. Stop causing gas mining at Warren. Have responded in the past to um, attempts by Apex to discredit the organisation. And we put to them in our response about eight points of reference, scientific reference, that were independent that we've yet never had a response from. So I think to suggest that we're scaremongering is just completely wrong. Thank you, Peter. I think uh, the footnote to that needs to be that we probably should resubmit that, Tom, and then uh, there's some communication oh, for I, I think it may have been covered, but I'll read it and then there's a question for Kirsty. Um, 
uh, Tom, are you aware that the APEX um, environmental assessment is wrong and has been admitted as wrong by your Dr. Short? Question one. And then to Kirsty, is an incorrect EA enough to cancel a licence? As we said, an EA is, is an iterative process, you know, with, with the uh, with the community, the government, and um, you know, it's 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 a it's a chance for everyone to have feedback. So yes, this uh, there's scope for these things to be changed, and that's what's happened. So, and, and this was the um, issue that this lady brought up, and, and uh, yes, it has been addressed, and, and uh, the system works. In this. Beg to differ on the system working. Um, there is an offence. Um, in the legislation for putting in a misleading information in your environmental assessment. Um, and I don't think anyone's ever been prosecuted for doing that. So that's one of the problems. Um, and it, it does, it is actually quite problematic in terms of what it means legally. Um, I mean, I'm not going to get into all the legal <laughs> details here, but I mean, it is a separate offence and no one has been prosecuted by the Department of Planning to date, as far as I know, for that. Um, and it does make it really difficult for communities who are relying on that information. Yes, uh, Robert, I'd just like to make a comment that uh, I had uh, the opportunity about a month ago now, three weeks ago, something like that, to go out to Darks Forest, to go to one of the uh, drill sites on the edge of Madden's Plains and to look across that wetland and I, quite frankly I was astounded that drilling would be allowed in that area. It just doesn't seem right to me. I think the chance of something going wrong is huge. As a, a senior executive of the company, if I was in your shoes, I would be very worried about it because that is a very pristine area. They're going to wipe out a, a, a 25 by 25 metre a section of, of the bushland there. And from, from that point, it's downhill all the way, straight into the wetlands. And I, I would be very concerned if I were you about that. Uh, Kirsty, if you'd like to come up Yeah, I. I don't know off the top of my head, I'd have to have a really good look at some of the legislation, but one of the difficulties that we're trying to highlight in a lot of these cases is once the approval is given, it's given, and the conditions are attached to it, usually through the expiration licence, I'm not sure that there is an ability to put retrospective conditions on many of these developments, and that's one of the really big concerns that we have. Um, and I think there is some ability, if there's breaches, for the minister to revoke, the expiration license, but I don't think there is to impose different conditions if, it's, if there's a change in knowledge. Um, in terms of the environmental assessment process, which is the what what there's two stages that happens. There's the review of environmental factors happens at the exploration stage, and then there's also um, a, an environmental assessment will be done when the the full blown development consent is sought, which will be now under Part Four One of the environmental. Planning and Assessment Act, for those of you, part 3A is gone, so there's a new section, but it's still for state significant projects. And they will have to do it now on EIS um, for new projects. But for existing projects like this one, it would have been an environmental assessment. So essentially the problem is, it's proponent driven. Um, and this is the big problem, that the person who's doing it prepares the assessment. Um, and it's not an independent process. If, so if you think this is problematic, the planning review is on right now, get in and say you want an independent assessment process done because it could be done. And one of the things that we'll be saying as part of the law reform is that it should be some kind of fund that you know developers or proponents pay into and that then an independent pool of scientists is generated, you know, you know, engaged to provide an independent assessment of that project at the initial stage instead of a proponent driven and consultants that work for them who, of course, never say it's a bad thing because they're getting paid. And I, you know, I've never seen an environmental assessment that says something is bad and shouldn't be done. Uh, thank you, Kirsty. And, and we will have to call it short after this last question. Tom, could you comment on um, the, the danger presented by the fault line coming from the drill area down to the beaches? That's correct? <coughs> I think that's a, that's a technical question that we will submit to, to Tom 
and and we'll um, we'll respond to that. We'll post it on the website. I think that's that's uh, the judicious way to do that. Now we're out of time. We're going to get kicked out of the room.